for. All right, well, let's find out uh, what the coach of TNC has to say about the matter because Casey is with 1437. That's right, guys. Hello, how are you feeling about how the draft went for you? Uh, I feel pretty good, but more importantly, the players feel really good. So I think that's what matters the most. I saw you hyping them up in there with some one of these fist pumps. No, I don't get one. Thanks. That's super awkward. Um, how important is it as a coach to make sure that you leave them with the best parting words to keep their energy up? I think it's really important that the players are in a good state of mind. If they're going to a game being worried, it's going to be very difficult. It's an uphill battle already. So. I Thirty seconds to battle. Hello,观众朋友们，大家好，欢迎大家继续收看我们《DOTA2018》国际邀请赛主赛事的比赛直播。我是解说马斯传媒的A。Hello，大家好，我是解说马斯传媒。Oh, it's going to be another C team that we have to say goodbye to is TNC versus Mineski. It is a C civil war, and it is going to be one hell of a clash to have in a best of one. We're already going to have the battle rune. Ice, ice, ice. Roll in. He's going to be able to take that battle rune. Doesn't get hit by Tim's, and might be able to get away. Tim's trying to make his way around the brambles, caught a little bit, but it's just damn being traded back and forth as our bounty runes should be a uh, two for two. Mineski able to only grab two and a lot of damage being put on jabs on his way out. Yeah, that might have actually been a kill on Ice 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 if that roll connects, but mm. unable to do so. It's like the dual lane. Mineski is going to be this brew and the Stark Willow. Just the early pressure to make sure that the SF is able to secure those last hits to, you know, try and get some souls that he can finally rival the uh, the last hitting capabilities of a Tiny, which is pretty tough to beat, considering how much attack damage he has over most heroes. Yeah, he's got a Quelling Blade too. Moon off to a pretty good start here. He already has three souls. Armel. It feels like we've got some like signature pickups on both sides. I always like to see Armel and one of these heroes that can really snowball and just kind of carry the game. He feels like that kind of player who just takes over at a certain point. We've got Ice 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 on his brewmaster in the top lane. Jabs actually taking the Dark Willow and is also going to be taking a slow here from Tim. It's going to be a pretty close call here underneath the tower. He will take out Cuckoo. He's the recipient of that extra intelligence as well as the first bounty. He only had the Bramble. That was the result of trying to go for the save on Ice Ice Ice. No Shadow Realm for him, so he's got to be careful here. Sam H is going to be playing a Pugna against an Undying Spectre, which feels like a pretty good lane, considering it's a one versus two. He seems to be able to just get in there and, and get free CS. He's so much faster than Ninja Boogie. I mean, Ninja Boogie can't really kill him. He can harass him out, get his HP low, but Pugna, he can just sit in the lane, and that's why we don't see the tri lane. They're just going for the straight up... Uh, we're just going for the straight up solo lane here at bottom lane. Don't really need to focus too much. It's not too often that we get to see a full time roamer. And Earth Spirit does seem to be trying to do that. Tim's, we saw actually, we cast a lot of his games in the group stage. He was doing really well for TNC on the Dark Willow, especially. But his Earth Spirit is also. Top lane jabs getting low again. Jabs will be okay, looks like. They get a lot more damage onto Ice 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 as a result as well. It's like a, a pretty decent clink sling. Hey, excusing the the misses that's going to happen occasionally from from the panda. And he hasn't even gotten drunk in his yet. That part's a little bit annoying, but Raven shouldn't care too much. Is can always wait when at least the harass war. Dying's going to just go for the pull here. Bushi having a very successful bottom. He started off taking a lot of harassment, but also got the very first range creep deny of the game. Sam H may not be able to stop him from being able to get uh, last hits. He is at least able to get a lot of experience solo. Going to try and go for a pull himself, but misses it. Take a look at the mid lane. Tim's has been waiting in this tree line for quite some time. Waiting for Armel to set up an opportunity. Armel kind of tipping his hand there. 
by pushing that far forward past the creep wave. And that's why Tims is going to go back, realizes that he has enough information. But instead, Tims is going to try and find more success in the bottom lane. And I guess with the way that Ninja Boogie has been pressing pretty far forward, maybe finally punish him a bit. Or at least give a little bit of stabilization to Sam H and his lane. The dagger comes out. It's just to be able to get the last hit onto the range creep rather than going for the hero pressure. Tims so far unsuccessful with his rotations. Has been spotted in both lanes. This board right here that Vineski has, it's going to spot the rotation from bottom to mid. Both the heroes that should be susceptible to ganks just fine here. So you're going to see that double damage pick up for Tim's. He's actually going to leave it out, it looks like, for Armel. The SF comes up into that high ground and is going to try and make a chase here for that double damage. It's going to be kind of interesting. Moon, Bottom lane, Sam H trying to get away from that dagger chase of Mushi. He's going to be taunting all the way. Tim's now just keeps on getting more damage on the moon. No five minute shrine available just yet. So he's going to try and loop around and get to the helping hands of Ninja Boogie. Gets the healing salve off. Tim's. He's going to go for the kick. He misses out. That means the healing salve. He's also going to be blocked as well. And that's just disastrous. Tim's may not be able to find a way out of this one. They're going to use the courier to be able to get them vision of Tim's. Make sure he can't escape. And that'll be a second kill for the game. Ice 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 in the top lane is going to go for Raven. Does manage to get a clap, but can't run away from Raven fast enough. And now Jabs is going to be in trouble as well. Jabs does have the Shadow Realm. Is going to pop it now. TNC. We'll make sure they get that five-minute bounty rune. So Mineski only left with one of them there. So TNC, two kills, three bounties. That's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, as long as they keep killing Ice Ice Ice, they don't really care if the Dark Will is going to live in that situation. And although they did get the kill on the Earth Spirit, he wasted a lot of time. It gave Armel a ton of space. If you just look at the CS difference right now, Tiny already up to 32 last hits. Shadow Fiend, even though you did get that kill, is not going to be happy about all that time that he missed in the mid lane. And no matter how many Wraith Bands he picks up, he just still can't really contest this Tiny, who's now level 6, when it comes to attack damage. So Armel is just going to be able to continue to keep that very large deny lead he has. And bottom lane is beginning to feel the pressure of a Pugna, who was solo half the time. And a Siege Creep push coming in as well. See Armel place reward for himself mid. Shouldn't be very susceptible to ganks though. It's starting to get really aggressive. There's the first raise. Not going to go for any more. Six minutes runes. Jabs was trying to protect the top one. It ends up being bottom. So Armel will be able to get that. Panel predicted that this mid lane was going to be rough for this tiny, but already 13 CS up on the Shadow Fiend. Having a very good go of it is. It does seem like the lanes all around are not too bad for TNC. But I, I would say that Mineski certainly put a lot of emphasis on, on team fight, right? They've got this uh, undying uh, brewmaster as well. These really big team fight heroes. Maybe we're going to see a similar situation in the last game where laning phase doesn't go so hot for one team, but they are able to make a, a bit of a comeback later just through the five versus five. Sam H continues to just more or less free farm here. Can't really be contested. And this is the issue when you don't have kill lanes. Yeah. You're going to see them go up to the top lane instead with Spectre. Level 6. They're going to try and chase down Raven here. But they TP Ninja Boogie up and everything. And it felt like they just pulled the trigger a little bit too early. Yeah. This is just a little bit too sloppy of an attempt. Raven. Very careful here. Isn't quite level 6, but he's going to be happy to see Mushi at this top lane, and that's going to force somebody down the bottom. Because I don't think this is an easy tower for Mineski to grab. Yeah, look at that. Too coarse for this. Uh, Raven still managed to pull the creep wave off the tower. Yeah. So you've got four heroes up here, and no real way to be able to take this tier one. So they've just got to TP the Spectre back to bottom lane, but the damage is, is already done, and it's continue. And Sam H doesn't need to go anywhere. What kind of sloppy rotation is going to cost them is... Almost 30 seconds of free farm for most of the lanes. It didn't even slow down Raven because Cuckoo was able to get the pull off onto the tower, like you said. Mushi, he said that he, he had unfinished business with that Aegis, and having this kind of start has got to give him some worry. Fortunately, he's one of the old dogs of C, him and Ice Ice Ice, putting this team together, as they said, after kind of the losers of the qualifiers from last year. Nice. Put together what is kind of an all-star lineup. They're facing up against TNC, which has just been this 
All Filipino squad that has been together, this main core group, for quite some time, and has seen a good amount of success. They won't want to go out early. The very first round. Whoever wins this will be the last C team remaining. Mm. You're going to represent all the hopes. That is a lot of pressure considering how many fans are in that Southeast Asian region all trying to back you. The smoke could be a successful gank on the moon. That would be a massive pickup if they could get it. But they are a little low on damage between the two of them. Neither one being level six just yet. Connect to Armel here. Armel posturing forward. Leading with the Arcane Curse. They're going to run into Ninja Boogie. Nice kick up, though. It does manage to hit Moon. They're just going to be able to pop the Undying. But will they get out? A TP up from Armel is pretty smart. And he'll just get back to his tower area. It doesn't even go back to the fountain. So this is just straight up good efficiency from the team. Meanwhile, CMA trying to go for the uh, Dark Will. Will be able to get him with the Life Drain. Can't shell Realm away from that one. And might be able to fight Mushi as well. Trying to make sure he doesn't get snagged on the Brambles. Tim's is going to lend a helping hand. In fact, he's going to chase out the Spectre. But, uh, oh, spotter him for a moment. Does manage to get the kick. Mushi's going to have to get another dagger away. Almost hitting Sam H. He gets in the trees. We'll try and TP out. Will be successful. There's just no more damage to follow that up. Still, all these rotations so far from Mineski can't feel very good. You rotated Ice 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 in the mid. Try to start a fight. Wasn't able to do so. He's now going to grab his level 6. But it's going to be an early 3k gold lead for TNC. And with that early safe lane tower going down, TNC control a larger part of the map. And you can see Raven, he gets his bounty rune. Which he does. That'll be 3 out of 4 once again for TNC. They start to add up, and now Tim's probably should get the XP mid. If you're tiny, you can just farm these stacks, you can go around in the jungle. This is the benefit of taking this early safe lane tower. And that all stems from the fact that Mushi made that rotation at top lane. It gave Pugna plenty of time to just push in. Right. If they actually set up that gank a little bit better, they kill somebody? Yes. Then maybe they even up the pressure. Maybe they take that tier 1 and trade it off with the Pugna, but... Again, every, everybody on the main stage is just going to be a little bit jumpy. Top three net worth all Dyer's in the favor of TNC attack. right now. Good start Dyer's to their laning phase. But they got to keep a good control of this game because it is a Mushi Spectre and you do not want to let that go into the late game. So that's why as a team, they're going to pressure them in tier one tower. Blitz, you've repeatedly said how much value this tower holds when it comes to being able to control the map and control farm areas. Jump in from Tim's does manage to get a two-man stun. Following that up is going to be Cuckoo's Silencer, but that is not much of a threat. That's why Mineski just keep on going here. Planning to take the tier one, finally do, and will TP out to make sure that they don't get cut off by anybody from the side of TNC. But TNC, Sam H and, and Raven, they just keep on going together. They are the two primary tower pushers. They are making short work of some of these objectives, but now maybe they've overextended themselves. Sam H is not going to be able to keep up the global silence. Nice play from Cuckoo. Managed to get it after the Brewmaster ultimate was used. Tim's. Jab's going to go for a solo kill here. He does have the level six. He's just going to try and use the Shadow Realm to get a good amount of damage onto Tim's, but decides to give up on it. He's out of mana, and now Jab's going to get gone on here. Tim's missing out on the roll, does have his ultimate. So even if he's lacking a little bit in HP, Jabs does get hit by it. Tim just needs to maintain damage here, but the Spectre is actually going to come in, try and help out Jabs. Tim's going to try and make a one-for-one -one trade off, and it's close. Jabs will take out eventually. Okay. Mushi. Being up here, not too bad. Good, Good area to farm. Side. Yeah, anyways. They've taken the tower. A bit problematic that they don't have any deep vision, so you can't spot any rotations, and that's just going to send them back. And that's the problem, I guess, with that rotation is, even though you want to be up there, Mineski, their supports have just been kind of run ragged, so they can't ever get vision on that top side. So what do you think they need to do to kind of recuperate that? Is it, is it time to make a smoke rotation? I mean, it feels bad without having the Brewmaster ult. Don't really have any items yet. You should wait for the Shadow Blade. This is... Part of the problem with their lineup is they've got two cores that don't really do anything. Their third core heavily relies on getting the Blink Dagger. That's why yeah. we're seeing him skip boots, really any sort of side items aside from the Magic Stick, and he's going straight for the Blink Dagger, because I think Ice 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 has realized we have a Shadow Fiend Spectre. Don't Neither of those heroes scared. can really create space for each other. All they do is eat space. And you're playing against the Clinks who play very active, a Tiny, a Pugna. All three of these cores are killers. For Mineski, all you can really do right now is farm and hope that you can weather the storm. That's probably why it felt so bad 
with Ice 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 using his ultimate in bottom lane. We do have a mid lane smoke here from TNC trying Ushi, to set up get on greedy Ushi. here. Ushi is going to be caught by Armel with a good blink dagger. Really excellent ward they laid out. They knew that Mushi was going to try and get some farm out of the jungle somewhere. Gets caught in the process. That's going to slow down his blade mail a bit. As weird as it sounds, I think that Maneski just needs to lose heroes here and there. Don't get caught in a 5 on 5 fight because you will not win it at this point. This early on, your so, cores can't really take fights. All they can really do is get items farm. Raven runs into Ninja Boogie. Now Moon is here as well, but the damage he puts on Raven just looks terrible when he's got that extra uh, health from the Death Pact. Being forced to split push this early into the game, it's only 14 minutes and you can't take fight. You're gonna lose heroes like this, Maneski. If you're wondering, like, why is a Maneski playing really safe? Well, somebody has to show themselves on the map or TNC will take all the objectives. Yeah, and that's why Jabs is... He's the one who could be super aggressive, right? And look for pickoffs because he's got the Shadow Realm. Gives him uh, some decent survivability. He's just got to draw attention away from Mushi farming on the Spectre. And Moon, who still needs a bit more time before he becomes a bigger threat, as you said, needs that Shadow Blade first. Yeah, and when you lose this mid tower and this bottom tower, what happens is you only feel comfortable farming this side of the map. And look at how TNC pressures. They're really trying to choke them out right now. They're creating the pincer. They know that everyone is up there. They see that Mushi farming on the opposite side of the map. He's got haunts. Maneski is still going to be a pretty dangerous fight for them. Even if they couldn't hold their mid tower, they're going to go for the offlane one. The Shadow Realm gets popped. They go for the Terrorize, but Jabs is still dead. Sam H just keeps on killing that support. They're getting sandwich here. Nice, nice, nice. Going to get stunned up. Has the primal split, but just gets bursted. No opportunity whatsoever. They need that team fight ultimate. And now TNC with two pickoffs like that. If they take the offlane tower as well. Mineski are just going to have no room to be able to farm where they need to. Yeah, there's potential for them to just go for the Roshan once you take this tier 1 tower top. You have no Radiant's map control. Things just get scarier and scarier, and that's why you see Mineski do as I advise. Just go for the split push. It doesn't feel good, but this is what you drafted into. Yeah, Mushi will farm bottom. Moon trying to put some pressure on the mid tier 1 tower. Doesn't actually go for the full tower, though. Instead, they're going to uh, regroup again in this top lane. And just try and prevent it from going down, but it's already taking so much damage. At least Moon for Mineski is top of the network chart. At least they can be happy about that much. Yeah, the Shadow Fiend has utilized the space that his team given him with just dying around the map, like I said. Your cores just have to be greedy in this game if you're Mineski. And now he's got to pay it all back, right? They made the space for him to farm. He now, with that Shadow Blade, has to create some space for Mushi and win them some fights. Trying to connect to this mid lane. Radiant's All smoked up right now. Mineski, they're tired of being bullied around the map. They're going to be able to find Tibbs here. Can't really roll away. Just too many heroes jump on him too quickly. And that will set them up to finish up this mid tier 1 tower as well. So, a 5k gold lead now trickles down to 4,000 gold. I really like that maneuver. They realize they can't go into straight 5 on 5 fights, but being able to pick off Tibbs, grab that tower, that's mm -hmm. going to alleviate some of the pressure. And meanwhile, Mushi's made very smart movements around the map. He hasn't been caught out. This is going to allow him to farm, slowly get back into the game as... Wow, you can actually see from the Dota Plus win probability, it's actually favoring Mineski right now. And in large part because of the fact their lineup scaled so well into the late game. They're supposed to get bullied right now. They just kind of have to have persevere through this tough part of the game. But uh, I personally feel like TNC has ramped up so much momentum early on. And it, it's just gonna keep rolling. I mean, it depends on what you do with the space that you've created for yourself on this TNC. You want to continue to put uh, as much pressure as you can. I'd imagine they just go for a smoke immediately. They want to be able to take five on five fights. And what Mineski want to do is split arm. Don't let any two cores show on the same side. Mm -hmm. Protect Mushi at all costs. And that's why you see jabs in this jungle area. They're always gonna send one support to kind of tank these smokes, and that'll be okay. Yeah. Unfortunately for him, he is dealing with some AoE stuns. Look at this, they're gonna run into jabs, but this is a somewhat okay death just because you're not gonna lose a core for this. Managed to get the Shadow Realm off, tries to go for the Terrorize, and instead is silenced now. A little bit more time. Oh, Armel, he actually finds the initiation inside the river. They catch Ninja Boogie as well. This is supposed to be a gimme, but Mineski chose to fight instead with a buyback coming out from Jab. They're gonna try and take this one. They get managed to get on top of the Spectre there, stopping the uh, TP out from Raven with the Brewmaster ultimate. They catch up to him, and it looks like this is TNT. 
and see they give up on the clinks. It was an okay fight to start, but once the buybacks came in and the Spectre was managed to just get on top of the clinks, things changed a lot and TNC decided not to re-engage. Armel sees him take the illusion from Baboon. Just gonna walk away. This, uh, the Shadow Fiend. I mean, he went from picking up a Shadow Blade. They made that maneuver in mid, got the pick off, got the tower. Now they just got a, a decent fight there in the top lane as well. And he's closing in on the BKB. That's going to be a bit worrisome for TNC. Yeah, TNC had this 3k gold lead because they couldn't, uh, they were able to take all the tier ones. They can take whatever fights they want, but Maneski's being very smart now. They're showing one or two heroes on the map. You go for those heroes, you just run at them. Jabs is there to tank the gank. And TNCs, they're, they're not really parlaying it into anything else. Yeah. Because the objective is, let's find a kill, turn that into a, a tower, an objective, and just continue the momentum. But they haven't really been able to do so. That's where they're headed towards this bottom area. Do you think they're, they're kind of rectifying the mistake they made from earlier? They, they need to go to this bottom lane, which is just an easier objective to take. Yeah, I think going for that top lane is kind of pointless, because you're not going to turn that into a tier 2. And you're most likely not going to be able to get Roshan either, unless Vaneski just completely feeds 5 on 5. They do have... Uh, Spectre Haunt is up, but he needs a bit more mana. 35 seconds till the Primal split, so it feels like it would be a good time for TNC to force some sort of action. As it, it seems like that Brewmaster Ultimate, like until the BKB is on, up on the SF, it seems like the Brewmaster Ultimate is like the best possible tool Mineski has to kind of threaten TNC in team fights. So that on cooldown, it's surprising to me that TNC aren't making fast enough moves, but they are going to be able to finally start putting some pressure on that tier 2 tower bottom lane. I mean, they've got a Pugna, a Klinks, and a Tiny, and they're playing a little bit more passive than they should. I feel like tower should be easy for them to get. It's 20 minutes into the game. The Shadow Fiend doesn't have BKB. Well, now he does. He just finishes it up. That's a very good timing for Moon. But before that point, I felt like there was no way for Shadow Fiend to be able to take that 5 on 5. You yep. drop sentries, you have global. You can't really get his ulti off in that position. Your Pugna is very strong. But instead, TNC, pretty passive. And I think this is a mistake. Mineski, their greed isn't going to go punished. They do go uh, a Mjolnir build for Raven. He's, uh, or rather, Maelstrom. He's got that kind of farming power, so at least he'll kind of be able to keep pace with the SF. You can see he's over 2,000 gold ahead of any of the other cores. Oh, this oh. top lane jabs get silenced. They are going to be able to jump on top of him with Armel. Those two are the big banes of this, uh, this Willow. The AoE stuns and silences just make it real Radiant tough to be able to play this hero. Armel now going to work on this top lane. Everyone on TNC trying to pick up BKBs before the next fight. Two heroes sitting behind Ice Ice Ice. Lucci's going to reveal himself now. Once the farm and Ice Ice Ice. Going for the hand of Midas, what do you think that is as opposed to like another team fighting item? I think he needs to be able to recover his game a little bit more. He probably anticipates that this game is going uh, at least the late game just considering his lineup. And he's like, we're not taking fights, nothing's really happening, the game is a little bit static. TNC is no longer looking for these pickoffs. And because he's uh, Mineski's best tool to fight, he has to play a good amount of his time off map, right? Yeah, just absolutely. means that you're naturally going to fall a little bit behind. Under attack. Force the rotations back. TNC not committing for this tier 2 tower. Tim's is going to roll onto this. They're going to try and take it. The BKB instantly goes out from Moon. And if anything, Kuku, once Tim, he completed that TP, he's going to get dusted up. Fortunately, he does manage to get to the side. Mineski just don't feel comfortable with this. They say, a pick off in a tower. Let's not be too greedy here. Obviously, TNC wanted to take a fight. Execution was maybe a little bit questionable. Yeah, now they're just getting run ragged on the map. Maneski are playing this beautifully. I thought there was going to be a time period where TNC just takes advantage of the fact that they've got two pushers, just starts hitting towers, but they got so gun shy all of a sudden. Yeah, 23 minutes in, of like they had all the towers, the tier ones, by like 10 minutes or something. And now we're sitting at 23 minutes and there's no tier twos dead yet. We'll see how the Spectre Shadow Fiend continue to scale. As I'd imagine that Moon goes for the Hex, that's been a pretty common build lately. After the BKB, it allows you to continue to scale, it gives you your own sort of catch and team fight on Shadow Fiend. It scales really nicely with the 40% CD reduction. 
big level 25 talent. Fortunately for TNC, the Spectre felt like uh, Mushi kind of had to go for a more combat ready build. So he went for the early blade mail phase boots and is now going to go for a Manta. So we're not going to see like that really big power spike and a Radiance being picked up anytime soon, which uh, I guess is to TNC's benefit. Yeah. I mean, there's two things about TNC's lineup. If they win a team fight, they're going to take your towers really quickly. Mm -hmm. Like going high ground is not an issue for them. And the other part is that they have a lot of control on the side of their cores potentially. Like this Klinks will eventually go for a hex of his own. Armel can play very fast with this Blink Dagger and Shadow Blade. Catch is not that big of an issue for them. It's how do you hold that? Look at that. They made it out the sentry there. Threw down a quick kill onto Ninja Boogie. Now he gets the vision of the ward. I don't know. How would you would you take that trade award for support? Probably not. Do you feel better about Maneski straight off? I mean, Maneski. I don't know. That vision probably doesn't matter too much. I mean, dying is still 270 gold. Especially since TNC did not actually push for any objectives after that. But yeah, you're right. Gold is a pretty decent chunk of change there for Raven, who is uh, needs his BKB so he can kind of match the SF. He could just stand and threaten the, the Shadow Fiend every single team fight. Ignoring the ultimate, the raises. Now the Brew has his Midas completed. This is going to be further greed from the side of Maneski. TNC going to try to punish this. They really need to find a team fight. Five man smoke up from Maneski. Four man from TNC with Blinks who can go and visit any time now. Looks like they're all going to be heading to the same area. And they're going to run into each other in the river. Now Ice 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 Ultimate is cut off the ultimate. Great stuff from Tim to the full up. They just blow him down. Now it's going to be the global silence. So Maneski quick to retreat. Ice 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 got greedy trying to go for the clap into the ultimate. Cuckoo's going to be found. Going to be hit by the dagger. It may be a kill for... Whoa, 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 whoa. Moon. You got to finish up that kill. He gets four staffed away. Oh, man. That's a mistake. Moon's kicking himself for missing out on that freebie. Maneski. Two crucial errors there. They don't get the kill on the silencer. And more importantly, Ice 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 tries to get the clap into the split. But that is way too greedy. Yeah. TI, best teams in the world. Of course, they're going to get the global silence off. And again, maybe that's where the hand of Midas. Uh, that is one thing. The, the BKB is really value against all this control that TNC has. He continues to be denied being able to, to pop his primal split. He may look back on this hand of Midas choice and say, that should have been my build towards a BKB. Maneski going for the Roshan because there's no global silence. Wow. This is a pretty bold move. If they get away with it, it'll pay off big. Yeah. As it'll deter TNC from further fights. And TNC's already been so gun shy lately. They see an Aegis on Maneski's hands. They they may just give up on pushing any towers. Raven is so far away. He's on the opposite side of the map. They circle around the area. They roughly know what's going on as Bushi. They are gonna be able to find the Dark Willow. Armel pops him real quickly, but with the sound of the Roshan falling, TNC back up. Pugna's going to try and run to bottom lane where there was a decent push going, but Spectre is already getting in front of that. Mushi will find even more farm. Finish up that Manta, has another 1,500 gold. Vineski, I think they feel very comfortable because they feel like they have the better late game, and TNC looks like they're also comfortable with the pace of the game. They're still getting some pickoffs. Mm. They still have pretty decent cores in fighting. This. Clinks is still going to be incredibly powerful, especially once he gets Hex. Pickoff tool. Him and the Shadow Fiend are going to play very similar games. Armel is now going to run into. Gets a silence on Ice 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 and done again. This Tim's Armel combination, these two killers, are so dangerous. And Ice 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 is the one who keeps on running into that danger. Fortunately, though, it's not Bushi, it's not Moon. Those are your big carries of the game. Those are the two guys who are going to continue to farm. Again, we talked about how Ice Ice Ice, he, he's not really getting a whole lot of farm. That's part why he goes for the hand of minus. So. This is a really interesting game just because it feels like both teams were comfortable with how the mid game was going. Yeah. Like you didn't see any sense of urgency on the side of TMC. And I'm starting to think that maybe because they felt like all three of their cores were doing so well. And if you just look at Ice Ice Ice, he's fallen so far far behind the other two. Uh-huh. The Shadow Fiend plus Spectre. And Eski believe that this is going to be enough to carry them into the late game. They don't really need the help of the third hero. And we'll see if they're proven right. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the, the fact that they're about to pick up three different BKBs, they already have one on the Clinks, just got it on the, uh, the Pugna earlier. 
as uh, that's on the courier. And then we're going to have Armel pick up a BKB. They're going to reach this huge power spike. And I'm guessing we're not going to see a Gunshy TNC at that point in time. I think they just read that their timing would be better with the BKBs, and that's when they'll hit hard. But TNC Armel almost getting got caught here. The smoke. Ice 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 knows there's still someone around, does manage to hit the clap, they just don't have the detection to find Armel. If you're Vineski, I think you just get out. This is still somewhat awkward of a fight. Armel's probably just gonna cut the creep wave. Immediately TNC ping for the push in middle. Now, your TNC, you're down to take a team fight, but you don't really want to do it on your own side of the map, right? You want to try and be the one still pressuring towers. And I think with all these BKBs filtering in, this is, like you said, one of their biggest power spikes. To be able to go for the high ground, take team fights. There's a ton of magic damage on the side of Mineski. Five man smoke up. But Moon on the front lines with his Aegis and BKB. He does not make for an easy target to bring down. So TNC are going to wrap themselves around to the side here. And apparently not. Plinks decides he needs to get his death pact going. You can see, just not thinking that's the fight to take yet. Dangerous game of cat and mouse being played right now. Is They're on the hunt. Vineski just winning up a little bit. Moon is the hero left behind a little bit, but he's got BKB. He's got Aegis, like you said. He's got a Hex now completed. Now he just needs the experience. Get to that level 25. Bounty runes come up. They're going to split them. Too. Now they're even pinging this top tower. They want to play with this Aegis. TNC can't afford. I mean, they can just wait it out. You can try and push in middle, trade out tier 2 for tier 2. That's why the Spectre, Mushi, is going to be the one to defend it because he does have his ultimate. If his team takes a fight in top lane, he can still be there. Dice, dice, TNC, they do neither. They don't push mid, or do they defend their tier two a top lane? Instead, might be able to collapse on Mineski as they split up a little bit. Ninja Boogie is going to be found. Armel does so much damage with every single swing. The zombie just explodes under the pressure of that. So, despite taking a tier two, Mineski will drop one of their supports. They're still. Sure, quite happy with that. Yeah, I mean, their two main cores, the Shadow Fiend and the Spectre, at 31 minutes in, they combine for one death. Yeah. They haven't been caught. Moon and Mushi have been playing very well together. They're distributing the farm. It does mean that Ice Ice Ice's game is a little bit hampered, which is why I think he went for the Midas. He realizes, yeah. I'm never going to be the person to deal with the creep waves. It's almost always going to be Mushi because he can ulti in. I have to be with the rest of my team waiting for these potential fights. That's why he's going to play with his two supports right now this high ground area that TNC is going to try and invade. Now the sentry's already laid in place so they are going to be able to see these heroes invading. Ice 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 Blinks and gets off the ultimate. No global silence this time around. Gets the stun out of the Tim's arm. Bell does manage to blow up uh, the start there. The Undying already going down but TNC want to be able to pursue for more. They're just a little bit scared. All three cores are kind of clumped up right now. But the Brewmaster ultimate about to wear out. That Primal Split is going to go down soon. Armel just needs to be able to get away from the too, but he's already been inside the vice up. Terrorize. Jab's going to turn around, trying to get the sun under Armel. Raven's going to challenge Moon. BKB for BKB. And then go up into the high ground, joining the rest of his team to finish off the Dark Willow. Still triple BKB popped by TNC. A little bit of life drain. More damage on Nabushi. TNC not feeling great about the pickoffs that he got. It was just two supports. What more? That's why they'll have the tier two objective. That's all the tier two towers down. TNC. I mean, both teams are in an okay position, as weird as that sounds. Yeah. Like, Mineski, their two cores still continue to scale, but at the same time, TNC have opened up the map, so if they win one team fight, that'll just be a high ground for them. And they take high ground so quickly with their lineup. Yeah, it feels like TNC's net worth lead is, like, just enough to feel good. Yes. About 32 minutes. Now, we, we push this 10, 15 more minutes down the line. 6k gold lead, that's gonna... that won't feel the same. At that point in time, Mineski's lineup will start coming on a the line a little bit more. The Spectre is going to be rather fierce target. Actually went for the Basher, is now going to go Scotty after that. 
Interesting build, Armel trying to find Ice Ice Ice, but whiffs the Avalanche. May still be able to catch this Brewmaster. Doesn't Hiding in the trees, free. another miss, but Tim's does manage to hit the silence here. But Ice 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 just trying to buy some time to get the flank away, but just can't get the distance. Now the two heroes are on top of them. Even giving away the intelligence to Cuckoo. But if you look at the lanes, Maneski, they just continue to push him out, continue to buy space. It seems like Maneski is committed to this. They're under the belief that the Shadow Fiend and the Spectre will be enough. <laughs> and Dota, Dota Plus, Plus, it just keeps on going up for Maneski. It's the, the game, it has little to do, I think, with the, the net worth and how that has grown for TNZ and entirely to do with the time. I think 500 it's health. That Spectre at this phase of the game, if he hasn't been pressured enough, is most likely going to win. Yeah. But I feel like TNC's lineup is not bad at this. I don't yeah. know, I keep flip-flopping because I'm not really sure. I can see how TNC will win this game pretty easily. And you could see the teams themselves believe that they're still at a good spot. The, yeah. the way they're playing, there is seems to be very little panic in TNC. They're not trying to force things too hard. Radiant the 500 health talent, though, is a big upgrade for the Spectre. And that's that's just the, the first step. Our scanning. Armel. And just get a, a bit of a scan on that. Raven's about to complete his hex. Pretty soon, that's going to be a very good way to jump on the Spectre's start. That's Mineski. Leading off with Moon first, Jab second. Dyer's they think that Roshan could potentially Sunday. spawn. That's why they're going for this. Ice, Ice, Ice leads the way. They manage to get the side of Ice. Until the Spectre pops the ultimate and terrorize, trying to get the chain stump, but the global sound stops it. So Raven will be able to shadow walk away. Spectre goes for Tins instead, tries to get in front, but he does. Good play by Mushi, gets in front of Tins, but still Armel, he came into the back line, flew the BKB, already killed the Undying. Now the Terrorize goes out, doesn't actually hit anything there. Spectre is still relatively healthy, though, can keep chasing down these heroes. That's where you're going to see Tins fall with the Dark Willow, as well as the Primal Split Pandas. Armel, slowed down by the Dagger here, he's just going to keep on tornadoing people, holding them in place. Cuckoo does manage to TP back, though, but Ice Ice Ice, Maybe he's a little bit too far forward. Raven's damage is still immense, and he had the BKB. He held it the entire team fight. He trusted the Global Silence to bail him out earlier, and turns it on now to be able to get two kills. Awkward engagement for Maneski. After the Bruce split ends, they don't really have the Disable on their team. That is the issue with their lineup is, once the Bruce split goes down, their team fight becomes very limited. And they're relying on a Spectre who didn't go for the, tri the typical Radiance build, so his scaling is still going to be a little bit awkward. Yeah. It is funny how, like, they just keep on running away from the Brewmaster Primal Split every yeah. single time it's popped. Because besides the Tornado and the Stun that comes from it, there's no actual real good follow-up there from, from Ineski. They don't really have a good hard stun to get in there and control a bunch of heroes. The best they got is actually Brambles and Terrorize. But making the, hero, the enemy heroes run away from you is mean, what's, not exactly what you want. What's even more important than having these like, heroes is the ability to put out your damage. Yeah. And how easy that is. And for TNC, the heroes can play back and forth. They've got blinks, they've got shadow blades, they've got invis. It's a lot easier for them to just engage and disengage. Right. Whereas for Maneski, once you commit with the primal split, that's it. You've committed. You use your haunt. You have to win the team fight in that span of time. Once that passes, your, your window of opportunity is just entirely closed. And that's what I think TNC has realized because yes, you're playing against a Spectre. Yes, you're playing against a Shadow Fiend, but it's much easier for them to get their damage off. Tim's trying to go for the D-Ward here. He's going to be forced down, double forced down, tries to get away. Stuns up himself as well as Armel. Jab's going to be able to get the counter section out there to be able to control these heroes. Tim's going to be the first to fall. Armel with his BKB still trying to keep his distance away from Maneski. They do finally manage to catch him. They're going to turn around and try and go for the Spectre. Spectre receiving a lot of healing. Mushi pops the Manta. Daggers up in the high ground and will just barely be able to escape. BKB activated by Raven, though. He's a little bit scared of taking this fight further. It looks like Armel's going to be the one left out to dry here as they do have the Scythe device. Do they have a reveal? They don't have any more. Armel in his second use of the Shadow Blade in the team fight allows him to live. So again, we just trade off. Supports, everyone gets low, everyone is close to dying, but both teams in the end decide not to fight further. Bushi being able to live there barely gets away. If he goes down, heavy team fight win for TNC. As Roshan is up, I'd imagine that both teams are eyeing that objective. Because the Aegis and the Cheese could be what pushes things. TNC, Raven. they're gonna walk in, they know it's up, and they're gonna go for it. They have so much physical damage. Look at the response, Maneski. Oh, look at the Dark Willow. He's going to be able to get a really good Brambles in with the AoE control as well. Raven, 
Runs away from Sam H. Good call by him. Making sure not to get too many Curse Crown stuns. And Eski might go for it themselves. They see that it's about half HP. Won't feel comfortable. TNC. Still gonna stay in the area. Both teams. 20 health regen for the Clinks. So he wants to make sure that he's always healthy in order to take these fights rather than the extra bit of range. I think it's to be able to survive the Spectre Haunt too. Mm. Like once you're able to shuck that off, you can take that engagement as TNC. Cuckoo. Glimmer Cave trying to run in. Armel from the top. Let's see who he finds. 27 seconds still on Ice Ice Ice. Fine. Jumps in, grabs Ninja Boogie instead of Ice Ice Ice. Blows him up already. Gion Godlike for him, but now he's got to get out the Terrorize. It's going to land onto a live stream. On two from Sam H. Armel dropping down to about half HP. Moon's trying to get the damage, but he just keeps on running away. Cuckoo is the target from the Spectre instead. Now he jumps onto Armel, but again a live drain, keeping him a little bit of HP. Tims comes in. He's nice. Oh. Backwards done. Hits on three. Raven's going to get in the middle of the mix. Pop the CCP. The Spectre finally goes down thanks to Sam mage while Raven hunting Moon. Moon hiding inside that jungle area, but Raven knows. He knows exactly where he is. But he Shadow Blades and will be able to get out. He still has the dust on him for a little bit of time. It's going to wear up soon. The AoE Blast, though, it's enough. Sam H, he got both the Spectre and the Shadow Fiend out of that one. And finally, TNC convincingly win a team fight, taking down two cores of support and have control of the Roshan pit. Yeah, I think I read this wrong because TNC, their ability to get their damage off is just so superior. Mm. Yes, Spectre is usually the late game hero, but... <laughs> <laughs> Trying to go see it on that high ground, but aside the vice from Raven, as, as you're saying now, it's like the Tiny and the Clinks just have this guaranteed, like, I disable you and I have tons of damage. It's a very simple way to put up forward damage onto the enemy. Yeah, and what's awkward right now is that on the side of Mineski, no one can really carry detection, yeah. so it has to sort of be Mushi to be able to get the follow-up, but he's running out of item slots very quickly. And he Ice Ice Ice, once he pops his Primal Split, what can he do? He can't pop Dust or anything like that, so maybe they buy him a gem, that's the response. He can't really put it on the Undyne. You see that Ninja Boogie's just dying almost immediately. Yeah. Like, both their supports are both liable to die so fast. He's still got Brown Boots, you can see. Initiation from uh, Armel, always being able to kill one hero and just make it a four versus five. And it's so tough to be able to bring him down between his innate tankiness and then also the fact that Sam H gave him a decent amount of life drain through all of that one. Armel, he was able to survive for so long. I can't help but thinking though, that if Mushi had targeted Armel the entire yes. time, rather than going for Cuckoo there for a split second, that they would have been able to take the Tiny out and perhaps the fight could have changed. Cuckoo was such a tasty bait though, he's like, ah, oh, well, it'll just take one or two seconds for me to kill him. <laughs> and you miss the opportunity as a result. Because in hindsight, of course, we know that one or two seconds would have been enough to kill that Tiny. Yeah. And Mineski, all of a sudden, he was 5k gold for such a long time, it's 15k. TNC, they were so patient and I was wondering why, and it was because they believed in their ability to get their damage off. And Mineski, they must have been thinking to themselves, our Spectre's still hitting creeps. No one's really died on our team. This yeah. is fine. And they get lulled into this false sense of, awesome. we're going to win the late game. And you see how that's paid off for them so far. Successful scan on both sides. Three-man smoke up from TNT. Actually, our Mel's there as well. It's only the Sam H. Pugna. Who's going to blink first? Hopping out a little bit. He found, though, the sentry's just a bit shy from seeing him. And they saw that sentry being played down. The creep spotted it, so... Mineski absolutely knows where TNC is at. They know that TNC's looking for a fight, so they're gonna play inside their base for now. The man to watch at this point is Moon. And how he starts his fights, because his BKB usage... and how he uses his hex is gonna be most important for this. Getting that level 25 online is also very vital to this hero at this point. Yeah. And that's where they need like a really good initiation because you can't spend those five seconds just chasing a hero and, and trying to get damage off. It just doesn't seem to work. TNC are a bit too uh, durable for that. You see that Mushi, he picks up the dust, which I think he needed to do. Yeah. He's the only person really that it's very useful on. Do you agree with his build, by the way, going for the Basher and the Scotty? It does seem to try and address the problem that you were saying is that you just don't seem to have quite enough control for these heroes. Yeah, I think he recognized the same issue. We see less and less people start to go for that Radiance. We saw Ace play that hero and in one of the games entirely. Yeah.
43 minutes in, 15,000 gold lead for TNC. Things are looking good, but the hardest tribulation is still ahead, pushing into the high ground against a team that certainly has great late game and can come back. You don't want to throw five, 10,000 gold away on a failed high ground push. So TNC are just looking to control things right now, talking about how they're going to set it up, how they're going to be able to push the, all the lanes in before they go for that push. Pinging the top lane, they make sure, okay, gotta make sure we catch all these creep waves first. Armel about to hit his level 25. That's an important one. Just toss charges can be really deadly. Just the extra control on heroes, burst damage. Someone like Ice 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 is going to have a hard time getting out of the Tiny's hands once he's, uh, once he's got a good, firm grip on him. Armel moving forward, but Nancy not really willing to commit for the high ground. I think they're pretty content in just starving Paneski out. Actually goes for the Avalanche cooldown instead. The AoE control. And Armel will try and put some damage onto the Tier 3. Of course, he's immediately scythed up. But. Healed by Sam H, who's got Tranquil Boots and the Lincolns. Plenty of HP to get on this hero. Tries to go for the toss back into his team. Instead, gets an illusion. Great reaction there from Mushi. But these, I mean, these attempts really cost TNC nothing. They just keep on healing up Armel. They're peeking towards that bottom lane. They want somebody to deal with that before it becomes an issue. And Maneski, they're reading that. They know that somebody wants to be around that area as Cuckoo. Gonna pick up the first bounty rune and he's gonna maybe walk up high ground. He should see Moon here. He is trying so hard to run away. Moon not willing to go into that high ground area. Not really sure what that holds for him. Got a double damage rune. The scan successfully spots Maneski in their pursuit into the high ground. So Cuckoo gets back and Armel. You know, both him and Sam H are immediately going to start going for those tier threes. So Mineski, their plans have been foiled. And the punishment is their tier three now going down to about half HP. That Ooh, coming in from behind with the double damage. This is going to be chaos. He's going to be able to get to the back line. He's going to be able to take out the Pugna first. Brewmaster gets in there, man. Everyone's out multiple heroes. TNT, they're down on three. Armel's going to be in next up. There goes the dust pop. They don't get the dagger on him, but they do manage to keep damage to prevent him from being able to get out. He managed to get an avalanche in. Ninja Boogie will die as a result, but it pops a tombstone, which will just be another tool to chase down Armel. That's four dead from TNC. What a beautiful setup there, using that double damage and the TP around, managing to get behind and take out Sam H, who has been a problem. Every single time they've gone for these fights, they've been hitting Armel first. Do they not have vision in that top area? I don't to think see so. the shrine TP? No. Oh, that is a significant mistake. Or maybe they just didn't notice. Yes, Cuckoo at bottom, gonna get caught on here as Jabs pops the ulti. This might just be five, and indeed it is, and now the gold lead. Just a 10k? Oh, Mineski reveal themselves now. They've killed four, tipping Cuckoo as they get the pick off, and that's gonna be tier two, maybe tier threes. We'll see, TNC, how many buybacks? Starting with Armel. That's gonna be so much gold down. I think they wanna wait on the other two heroes, the core spawning in under 20 seconds, but... Silence are gonna buy back. The gold lead being further cut in half. 7,000 is the number. The Glyph buys them a good amount of time, and it seems like Mineski do not feel good enough about taking that tier three, but still, I mean, this is the first time they've been outside their own base in a while. Yeah, and they made such a game-winning play there. Going for the DD Shadow Fiend, TPing in from behind. They sandwiched them completely. The Hex on the Sam Age, they have no vision on that high ground area. You can see, like, Armel's trying to deal with the Tombstone, and boom, Sam H just instantly dead. As soon as Moon reveals himself, goes to the Scythe and just brings him down with the double damage. And as soon as you dealt with a lot of the support cast of TNC, Armel is really not that threatening anymore. Armel is threatening when he's starting the fight, and you kind of almost have to focus on him. But when he's the last one left alive, he is not a threat whatsoever. Mineski injecting some life into this game. They should tell them, as long as we take the team fights perfectly, we're gonna be okay. But the team fights are a whole lot harder to take perfectly when you're not so close to your base. 
So as they do manage to get quite the windfall in net worth, now TNT is only 5k ahead. Mineski also put themselves at risk. They're a little bit more split up now. Now they're going to be playing on TNT. They've got another DD rune, Armel. Oh, oh, oh. It went so well last time, so Moon's going to go and get it again immediately. Now Armel does manage to get the disable on the Moon, but he caught the BKB, and now Armel doesn't have any more damage left. They've already taken out Cuckoo. That's going to be Mushi's job every single time. Armel's BKB is about to wear out, but now they're Armel dies here. They're trying to go for the side. They're trying to go for Spectre. They're controlling him pretty well, but he popped the, the Manta, and now he's going to be able to turn. Gets the Abyssal Blade onto the Clink. They need to be able to get Raven oh, out. Armel goes down here. down by all the Tombstone, and now Armel is going to be caught by Jabs. Well, TNC are falling over the place. Two men dead. Three actually is TNT with only the buyback on Raven. How can they hold this with only an Earth Spirit? It's two on five. All Mineski. of a sudden, just two team fights and Mineski may have just scored themselves a win. They're going straight for the tier fours. I think it's seeing the throne exposed and it seems to be over. Tim tries to come in, instantly gets inside the fight. No damage comes out whatsoever. Instant buyback, they do manage to take out Jabs. But Raven by himself trying to take on Mushi, who's just so much HP, they can't really stop the throne from going down. They poke at Mushi bit by bit, he gets a base blade up. Now control kick away. That's gonna be able to buy maybe Raven a little bit of time. He's trying to get back to the fountain, but the rest of the team will finish off the throne. Maneski, come back and survive through the international.